so we want to welcome you all. This is where we go into the Bible to study the Word of God as led by the Holy Spirit, both individually and as uh, collectively as a church. So we are uh, covering all the books of the Bible, and we want to welcome you all. But first, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your favor. Thank you for assembling us, Lord, and for all you do. Uh, be with us this evening as we study your word once again. And we ask you, Lord, to give us what we need to grow closer to you in all ways. Yes. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, yes. we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> all right. So we left off in the book of Ezra. Ezra. Last week, to those of you who were here, uh, we left off in Ezra, and this is, uh, if you remember correctly, uh, there was something that went on with a king named King Cyrus. He was the king of Persia. Does anyone know what he did? Anybody remember? Yes. He made a, he made a proclamation, right? Yeah. A decree, right? He, he was restoring the, the uh, God's people to their rightful place. And he was a pagan king, uh, so why would you think he'd do something like that? God used his heart. God used anybody. What's the scripture we used last week? Anybody remember? Proverbs? Proverbs 21 1. King's heart lies in the hand of the Lord, and he moves about as he pleases, like the waters of the sea. He can make you go left or right. Okay? And we had some testimony about that. Sister Lucille showed how he had uh, come in her life. And he had done some things in, in my life, in the life of Pastor Annalise, and I'm sure many of you, where the Lord just took over your life. And he called someone who maybe you didn't feel good about or they didn't feel good about you. And the Lord will turn their hearts for your good. Yeah. That's why it's so important for us to read these uh, chapters to understand that the Lord is always there. It said in uh, uh, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, let's go there. Let's go to Ezra. And let's go to chapter 1, verse 1. It said, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. So I said last week that, that the Lord was cooking something up. Mm -hmm. That's what it means by stirring up the pot. He stirred up this man's spirit because the Lord was cooking something up. And sometimes we don't know the Lord is cooking something up in our lives. We don't see him stirring the pot. But we have to be patient and let the, let the Lord mix that thing and let him serve that meal because the Lord cooks things up in our lives. Sometimes it comes to our children. Sometimes it's, a, it's, it's something going on at work that we can't control. As long as we stay faithful to the Lord, know that he is doing his job. Know that he is cooking something up for us so that we come out okay. And that's what he did with the uh, children of Israel. And it, so, so we... I want us to be able to see these things as they come along. When we see these things in Scripture, try to apply them to our lives. Yes, well, and you know, I didn't, I didn't notice it. Well, I noticed it, but I, it stuck out this time as I read on down further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That part where it says in verse one, also had him put it in writing. That was, yeah. that's going to be important later on down the road. Yes, that it was in writing. Yes. See how much you see how the Lord covers things. No halfway with God. Yeah. Not only did this man say it, that I'm making this, he put it in writing, okay? Mm -hmm. So they couldn't retract it. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes, uh, Pastor. You know, while reading uh, Ezra chapter 1, what 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 I, I like to do is, I mean, I like to read God's word, and I, and I say to myself, wow, that's the same God that we're serving. That's the same God that's doing the same things today where people will be seeing. And he allowed me to see that when God worked in the, in the, in the, uh, of, of the heart of his people mm -hmm. to go and build them a temple, they prepared themselves. And it reminded me of Spiritual Church Worldwide when we were in Crockett. 
And the Lord say, uh, cut this, pack your things, cut the strings, and pack your things, new faces, new souls. Mm -hmm. And so we were ready to go. And people were, everybody worked together. Mm -hmm. Everybody, we all worked together in preparing to go to follow, to follow that cloud. Everybody assisting. Everybody doing their part. Everybody still doing their part. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, that put a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. That, you know, with the new faces, new souls. I thought about Michelle. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Absolutely. And the Lord knows, the, you know, he knows what we need and he knows when we need it. But it does, does it catch him off guard? No. No, it doesn't. No, no, it does not. He always knows exactly, exactly what we need. And uh, there is... Uh, God knew exactly what was going on with, uh, the, with uh, Judah. And if we turn, if you turn to Jeremiah for a minute, it will show you that we have adequate proof, not only in Ezra, but in other, there were other prophets, there were prophets going along, going around prophesying around the same time. Yeah. If you go to Jeremiah 25, verse 11 and 12, it says here, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Yeah, this is Jeremiah, what he was saying. He said, then it will come to pass when 70 years are completed mm -hmm. that I will punish the king of Babylon mm -hmm. and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. Now, so there we see the future at that time of uh, Judah for being uh, disobedient to the Lord. <coughs> the Lord said, this is going to happen. How did Jeremiah know it was going to be 70 years of captivity? The Lord is speaking through this man. It, that's exactly what happened. And then the land was moved into desolation. And then the, the king of Babylon, of course, it turned over. So we see right there where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah con concerning the, the people of Judah. And this was during the first year of Nebuchadnezzar. So this was his first year, the king of Babylon, and the Lord gives Jeremiah this information yeah. so specific that only God could know that. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah couldn't know it was going to be 70 years. 70 years. How would he, how would he know that? So that's amazing. Uh, right there in verse in verse 12, that's amazing. The prophecy mentions 30, 70 years that must pass, mm -hmm. which was the amount of years that Judah was held captive mm -hmm. and if, in Babylon. And now, now let's do this. Let's flip to uh, chapter 29 of Jeremiah. You all know this one. 2911. Yeah. Okay, now 2911, watch this. Chapter 2911, Jeremiah is saying, uh, the, the Lord is speaking through him. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, but let's go on. Let's go on to verses 12 to 14. This is what applies to the, the people of Judah. He says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now listen to 14, he said, now this is very important. He says, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. What captivity? Look at this. He says, I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. That's, what does that mean? That means we're going through the storm. We have to um, wait on the Lord. Uh -huh. Right now, they're back. Right now. Right now, they're back. This is today. Okay. They're back. Now, they, they became, see, they're making Jerusalem a capital now. If you look at this, they got God's down to these people right now. It doesn't stop. God's word is infallible. That's why we call this the infallible. There's no mistakes in it. Yeah. He says, I caused you to to be captive. Yeah. Why? Because you were disobedient. Mm -hmm. So now you've got to go through this, then I'll bring you back. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll be waiting for you by the door. Right? <laughs> Whole different attitude. Whole different attitude. Yes. Again, so
sovereign Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, omniscient, all-knowing God. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when we're going through our storms, praise God, thank you, Jesus, it's not for 70 years. But we never know <laughs> what, how long it's going to take. Mm -hmm. We're going through something, but God knows that they're going through something. He says, I've given you uh, uh, thoughts of peace and not evil. Evil meaning the first time, you know, someone, uh, sometimes we think that everything is, all the time we think that God, everything is God's fault, or God doesn't like me, or mm -hmm. God is doing this to me. But no, God is, is what we start doing, that God is like cleaning it up. He's like cleaning, cleaning it up. It's something my exercise teacher was saying today, because she said that the people with the exercises, she said, why are you all looking at me like that, like I did something wrong? You, deserve, you got this body this way, so I'm just here to help you get back to where it was. And you're giving me, you know, I, you know look at Looking at me down and like, Looking at her cross eyed like she put that, like she put that weight on y'all. And I just started thinking, Lord, isn't that us thinking that with all the things that we go through, that you create everything to be good? And so you're putting the things, bringing things back to, well, we, well we may, maybe we may not see that, but, but that's what I was thinking with, with God, the 70 years of captivity. Well, you know, God is never caught off guard. We may be caught off guard, but we could just become downright confused. Where we don't realize we're 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 being our own worst enemies. That's why we have to read read the word and really tune in. Yes, Paul says to count all joy with all various trials. Yes. That's what he says in, and in James up. 1 and 2, count it all joy. And not give up or give why? hand or throw in a cup towel. The Lord is sovereign. He's in the control. Lord is sovereign. He allowed it. <laughs> he says, count it all joy, you fall to various trials. So for the testing of your faith, right? For yes. Patience. Yes. And then to let patience have its perfect work. And you may be patient, uh, perfect. So so he's trying to perfect us. And sometimes it takes a little spanking on the hiney <laughs> to get us <laughs> to, to get us right. You know, it takes a little bit of person it takes a little bit of suffering yeah. to get us right, mm -hmm. you know? And we're children. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this, but but through it all. God is there. That's what I want us to understand. Amen. Now, he sent a prophet. He sent a scribe. He sent a prophet. He sent Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Was Jeremiah captive? Yeah. yeah. yeah he's right there. He's captive too. Yeah, he was. Well, so you got a captive that the Lord sent with you to, to give you the word of the Lord. While, you, while you're going through, but watch this. Let's go to, let's, let's show you how complete the Lord is. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 44. Let's, yeah, go, to, let's go to Isaiah 44, if I can find it. I think it's uh, 28. Look at how this is prophesied. On 28, he says, he's speaking to Jeremiah, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure. This was, this was a long time before Cyrus is even born. Mm -hmm. Look at this. And it says, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built. And to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. Isn't that exactly how did Jeremiah know that, that this was some 150 years before? And then he says, on down 45, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double door. See, Cyrus had, he was a powerful king. And the Lord is already saying, that's the one I'm going to use mm -hmm. to get my people straight and to restore them. And he says, I'll go before you and make the crooked places straight. I'll break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may not know, so that you may know that I, the, that, that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. Now this is, I don't know what else to say. If, if we see that the Lord, um, he doesn't just cover one area, he covers the whole area. He makes it so that, that you know he's complete, right? He's a complete God. In his name. Following what God had told him, he didn't de deviate, and he knew. Right. Although he may not have served 
God as his God, he knew the God of right. Israel had spoken to him, right. and he was not going to deviate from right. what God had told him. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means. That's what I mean about God can take anybody and anoint them to do the work. So he, can. he can take your enemy and turn that enemy around. I, I was saying last week how when I was working, how the Lord used a man who everybody was afraid of and he wasn't in anybody's corner. And the Lord told me, don't do anything. Don't give up your seniority. He sent that man to me. And that man, you'd have thought he was my uncle. He took me under his wing and told me what to do and just said, do this. And it was done. Then he retired. And I received the promotion anyway. Mm -hmm. from the least likeliest person to do because the Lord sent him. He put it on this man to do that. We and, had a discussion with someone uh, yesterday about how God uses people, anybody, at, at the at, at another pastor, that how God uses <coughs> different people to do. If you're not in place to do what you need to do, God will use somebody yeah, else. Yeah, that's true. And that's why we have, to, we have to wait. We have to wait until God... Uh, puts us in position because if you move out of position you might forfeit that blessing yes well, when I read this study that we're reading about how uh, how God used Cyrus to uh, allow our pe his people to start rebuilding the temple and, yes. you know, yeah. and then get the things that Nebuchadnezzar had took the gold and the silver and the things that, that were precious inside the temple yes. and then I think about what God did to me because in my life going to prison and doing all the things I did, I ended up falling into taxes and and, and I owed I owed all kinds. But when, when I when I gave it to the Lord and the Lord said, Terry, just go to this person. He sent me to somebody to help me with this. Mm -hmm. Seven years later, I got a letter from the IRS that says, you are no longer obligated to pay us nothing. <laughs> hey, that's so and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. Seven years. Well, seven years later. Yeah. Seven years seven later. Seven years. No accident. That's the, the what they call it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can't you know my wife does that she's years. a one person, so yeah. she'll line up seven people just to get completion. <laughs> <laughs> need a party. Yeah, we need seven people to make it complete. <laughs> <laughs> but no, God does use numbers. Yeah. It's the statute of limitations. Yeah. Right they can't yeah. change them. That's right. That's a blessing. Thank you, Lord. And this is how God is. He's sovereign. Sovereign, and so whatever, whatever predictions he had through his prophets, whatever uh, 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 prophecies they came up with, how could it be 150 years before mm -hmm. one man wasn't even born? And this is, and he's mentioning him God by is. name. God you see what I mean? This is God. This is mm -hmm. God. So that's what that means. I was going to ask you all, what does what's that point to? It points to the sovereignty of God, doesn't it? That He's sovereign. He reigns over everything that takes place in our lives. Um, so reading these uh, uh, books in First and Second Chronicles and Ezra and beyond, it's as if the Lord has uh, took some Legoland blocks and just put everything together, and He's forming the picture of us. Do you see it? Like a jigsaw puzzle. He's putting the puzzle. This yeah, puzzle yeah. goes back thousands of years. Sure, yeah. And now we're part of the puzzle yeah, today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Awesome. It's the same thing. It's a, he's putting the pieces in place in order to keep us on the yeah. proper path. Yeah. And that's what the churches yeah. need to understand. Yeah. Is we can't get blindsided and, and get blinded or get so bored or, or un un unenamored so that we just, we're just going through the motions because that's what the devil wants us yeah. to do. He wants us to give in. Do you all see that? Yeah, it, it's, we can, through all of these, you know, from all the way back to Genesis to where we are now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God is faithful to his own word. He, he is. is so trustworthy. Yeah. And he is so oh, he yes. is amazing when we yes. look at what he said. Mm -hmm. Yes, like even Isaiah prophesying Jesus. Yeah. Is, uh, he yeah. Is it so long, long, it's amazing. Long Go through it. Isaiah sometime and just look at, and look at some of the things. You know, God doesn't always yeah. work in a way that you think you know, mm -hmm. that you're going to understand. You know, Isaiah had to preach naked for a while. Mm -hmm. do. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. But, thank God, <laughs> but I'm just saying that God does things in a different way sometimes. Yeah. But 
you, you know, you know that's why he says, "My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways." Mm -hmm. But if we follow him, he's going to do what he mm -hmm. said he's going to do. That's but, the thing about it. But he was getting ready to build a temple, yes. and that's what this is all about. Yes. So when you get this way, then you, when you read Nehemiah, it's going to get very mm -hmm. into it. Because mm -hmm. I get excited about Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. I'm already at it because, right. because it's because it's telling you how God wants us to be united as one. God's yeah. word doesn't change. That's why no. Jesus said that um, my, uh, my heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Mm -hmm. they're, in, they're put in this Bible for us to follow as a, as a, as a guideline, mm -hmm. even now. We just don't, don't make sense out of all of it. It may not make sense to us, but if we look at That's why we gather together and let the Holy Spirit teach us, right? Mm -hmm. So God has been working through his people and various children for thousands of years. Right here in this own, in this book of Ezra, you got Ezra, the scribe. Who, who was Ezra? What was his title? Anybody know? What was it? King, King of Persia. No, no, not Cyrus. Ezra. Oh, Ezra. He was a scribe. He was also a high priest. High priest. Some people call him a prophet. Okay. So we know that he was a man really being used by God. Yeah. And he was learned do. in the word of God. Yes, he was he was an expert in uh in the Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. So they used him as a scribe so he could go and pronounce what the Lord wanted him to pronounce and then get it from the Lord on top of that. So see God will use people. He'll use your gifts and your talents for what he wants to use them for. If it's getting too hot, you, you all, you can turn that down a little bit, Larry. I see something. Everybody else has their scarves on. I think I'm the only one fan. Well, you matter. You matter. I, I, you I, matter. I, 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 I got hot. Some people subscribe to a priest. Yeah. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Let's do this. Uh, because uh, I want us to understand how, how things have been working for years and years and years, and uh, how God uh, uh, prepares people. Let's go to Romans for a minute. We'll get back to this, but let's go to Romans chapter 1. And can somebody read Romans 1, 18 to 23, if you get there? Let me see, 1, 18, for the wrath of God. 1, 18 to 23. Anybody want to read that? 1, 18. And 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all and, and, and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what we may know, what we may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mm, okay, you can stop there. Now listen, what does that mean? <coughs> can somebody tell us what that means? Anybody want, want to take a shot at it? God's wrath is on, on all un, unrighteousness. You know the truth, but you're hiding the truth. You're pretending you don't know the truth. It says uh, uh, God's creation testifies to his glory. God's creation and, testifies yeah. to his glory. And a yeah. lot of things in this world are can't be explained outside mm -hmm. of there being a creator, there being a mastermind, which is God mm -hmm. behind all of this order. You know, mm -hmm. we get the order mm -hmm. in nature, the order in our mm -hmm. bodies, just the order of the universe. Mm -hmm. That did not just happen. <laughs> right. And he's telling us something here. Look, it's the first line. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, that everyone who is acting unrighteous or ungodly, the wrath of God is going to come down. Why? It says, because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. Are they talking about Christians? Are they talking about mankind? All people. All people. Now look here. It says. We all have a conscience. We know deep down <coughs> inside, right from wrong. Mm -hmm. Generally, most people. Yes. So that's what I want to point to. It says, "For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made." Mm -hmm. 
It says here, we even understand his eternal power in Godhead. So that, guess what? We are without excuse. Without excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God shed void in every man. Yes. Yeah, you know wrong, right from wrong. Yes, ma'am. I think his sister Jackie is saying God's righteous judgment. God's righteous judgment. It is right, sister Jackie. And it is righteous. Mm -hmm. Because basically we know right from wrong. Yeah. We may not, you may not be saved. You go rob a bank, you know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're not saved, you go to a bar, get into a fist fight, and hit somebody, they hit their head on the ground and die, and now you've got a manslaughter charge. Mm -hmm. You knew before you got drunk, mm -hmm. you were sober. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you knew that you shouldn't take that drink if you're going to act like that. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we really have no excuse. And that's what I'm trying to get across. That, that So everything God does when he says that I cause you to go to be captive because basically you know what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do through you. So we have to let God do what he does. And if you go on and read this, I think we stopped at 21. It says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools mm -hmm. and changed the glory of the incorruptible God to an image made like corruptible man right. and birds and four-footed animals and That's creeping amazing. things. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing that in society? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. oh, Are we yeah. seeing that they're turning God into an afterthought? Yeah, yeah they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're worshiping statues more than they're worshiping God. Mm -hmm. They we're worshiping people more than we're worshiping God. That's why God has us out there trying to tell them, hey, you know, you gotta, you got to remember God is with you and you yes. need to talk to him and, yes. and he's in control. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, the devil doesn't want people to know that. Mm -hmm. So from so it said from the beginning, we have an inner programmed uh, mind and heart to know, mm -hmm. to have the knowledge of God. When we learn the word, we become, of course, spiritual beings. But even before we know this word, it's like having a chip, a computer chip in you that only God can really turn off. You know what I mean? We're cable ready, you know, or cable compatible with God. <laughs> and then when you hook up the Holy Spirit, now you get all the channels. You know, right now we get a few channels, but we get enough to know that when we're right and wrong. We're right and wrong. But... That the Lord is like direct TV. He gives you everything, you know, all the gifts. So we need to understand that. Especially and when you have the Holy Spirit leading in you and convicting you and teaching you. Yes. But yet and still, you suppress that. You just mm -hmm. don't do what he says and continue to practice mm -hmm. uh, unrighteousness instead of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon you're blind to it. And you don't even realize what, what, you're, what you're doing. So we see in the book of Ezra that Again, we've seen this before that God can raise up anybody yeah, yeah. to do the work. Mm -hmm. Now, this yeah. is the point that this is a question I want to ask. Uh, if God raises up someone to do the work and to give you the information, are we obligated to do the work? Yeah, we have free will. Yeah, we have free will. We're obligated. We can disobey. We can't say we don't Let me rephrase that. Will he force you to do it? No. no. Okay. No. So uh, I know what you all mean. We are obligated. We should do the right thing. Once you know. Yes. Once you know. Yeah. But but if you don't know, we have free will, don't we? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we still don't do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we still we you know we the, the the final to the final at the final bell we have the right to either obey God. Or disobey God. Yeah. And that's what we're forced with day in, day in, and day out. A lot of small decisions where, where we make up our minds to do certain things mm -hmm. and then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Or we we pray on the way. We all we already made up our minds to go to that place. <laughs> You're on the way there, and you said, Did you did we pray? Lord bless you know what I mean? Bless <laughs> our plans. Bless my plan, Lord. <laughs> and that's the human nature. That's why we have to be so tied to the Lord, you know, uh, um, so that we make sure we're going by God, by the call of God. Now, Ezra was a man of God, and did he obey God's call? Yes, yes he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's one of the men that 
that they say uh, uh, did right in the sight of in the sight of God. So, and just for the record, like I said, he was a chief priest. He was a uh, he was well versed in the law of Moses. He was actually from the lineage of Aaron and Eleazar and, and all these people. So, so he's related to them. So, if you read Ezra, you learn that the people of Judah have been mixing with pagan people. Yeah. You all remember that? Mm -hmm. Can we go to chapter 9? Let's go to chapter 9. Anybody want to read? You all feel like reading? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to read the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody wants to read, let me see. There's something in there. I want to, if we can read chapter 9, somebody can take verses 1 to 5. Sister, Sister uh, Wanda, did someone take 6 to 10 behind her? Anybody? Oh, Brother Larry, and then Brother Terry, can you get 11 to 15? That'll cover it. That should cover the whole chapter. Ezra 5? Ezra chapter 9. I think you're going to get there. Yes. Okay. Who's got one? Okay. And when these things were done, the leaders came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the chief and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands with respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Pezzasites, the Jebusites, Jebusites. the Ammonites, mm -hmm. the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Right. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves. Yeah. and their sons, so that the Holy Seed is mixed with the people of those lands. The Holy Seed is mixed with the people of those lands. See, God didn't want that. Go right. ahead. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. Mm -hmm. So when I heard this thing, I tore my garment and my robe and plucked out some of my hair on my head and beard and sat down astonished. Then everyone who trembled at the words of God of Israel assembled to me because of the transgressions of those who have been carried away captive. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice, I arose from my fasting, and having torn my garment and my robe, I fell on my knees and spread out my hands to the Lord my God. Okay. We've got six and ten. And I said, oh my God, I am too ashamed and humiliated to lift up my face to help my God. For our iniquities have risen higher than our heads, and our guilt has grown up to the heavens. Since the days of our fathers, to this day, we have been very guilty. And for our iniquities, we, our king, and our priests have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the land, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to humiliation, as if it is this day. And now for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of re revi 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 revival revival yeah, in our bondage. <coughs> For we were slaves, yet our Lord did not forsake us in our bondage. Mm. But he extended mercy to us mm -hmm. in the sight of the king of Persia to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now our and now, O oh, our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments. All right. Thank you, Larry. Brother Terry. Verse 11. <clears throat> which you commanded by your servants, the prophets, saying, The land which you are entering to possess is an unclean land, mm -hmm. with the uncleanness of the peoples of the land with their abominations which have filled it from one end to another with their impurities. <clears throat> now therefore, do not give your daughters as wives for their sons, 
nor take their daughters to your sons, and never seek their peace or prosperity, mm -hmm. that you may be strong and eat the good of the land, and leave it as an inheritance to your children forever. Mm -hmm. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great guilt, since you, our God, have punished us less than our iniquities deserve, mm -hmm. and have given us such deliverance as this, mm -hmm. should we again break your commandments and join in marriage with the people mm -hmm. committing this abomination? <clears throat> Would you not be angry with us until you had consumed us, so that there would be no remnant or survivor? O Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we are left as a remnant as it is this day. Here we are before you in our guilt, though no one can stand before you because of this. All right. Thank you all so much. So we see here what we've been seeing throughout the Bible. Yeah. What is this, what is this uh, uh, telling us about this chapter, about mocking God? Anything? Yeah. Yeah. Sinful nature. Sinful nature, right? Yeah. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 9 tells us that the people of Israel, listen, watch this. It, it, it says in chapter 1, when these things, this is Ezra talking, when these things were done, the leaders came to me, saying the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites mm. have not separated themselves from the peoples of the land yes. with respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. And that's not right. So we look at this and we see what's the most glaring thing that we see about this? Disobedience where? All these right all these rights they and they're all in, joining right. with the people of the land that God told them to right. and the sad not part to follow their ways or intermarry with them. Now with listen, them. intermarry yeah. and all these things. But who did it? The it says the priests, the priests and the Levites. The, Levites. Mm -hmm. the priests and the Levites, the they had to be they took care of the inner chambers of the, of the uh, altar. Yeah. They got the, 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 the holy place. Mm -hmm. That was their only job. Mm -hmm. and so so mm -hmm. yet they're going out intermarrying they do. and doing things that were an abomination mm -hmm. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, that, yes. and they're married into and when you do, you marry their idols. Yes. They are idol worship yes. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, down in verse 12 it says now therefore do not give your daughters as wives for their sons nor take their daughters to your sons yeah. and this, listen to this line and never seek their peace or prosperity yeah. mm -hmm. what does that mean? never seek their peace or prosperity never let yourself huh? what they have Yes. Never, never let yourself find. Never, never allow yourself to get comfortable doing what they do. Right. Rely on the Lord. Yes, because when we start wanting the the peace of the of the world, yeah, that too. If that's what gives us peace, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. If we look want the prosperity of the world, that's what gets us in that's trouble. Like that's like coveting your neighbor. Do you see it now? Coveting your neighbor. Do you see that now? Yeah, that, that's what's going in the church now. That's prosperity where we're going. creatures, you know? Yes. Prosperity. They want to be famous yes. quickly. And it's all about the money. Many of the but leaders. You know, the Lord wants us to be good stewards over his house is holy. Mm -hmm. He said, You take care of the things in the house. Yeah. I'll deal with the world. But we're now bringing the world yeah, into the church. Yeah. yeah. And so now it's like all, all mixed, it's all like all mixed in because we want to be like the world so badly that instead of being good stewards over God's church and as the, as the Lord clean them up, he cleans us up, then he brings us into a church that looks like the world. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know any better. And if your leaders are teaching you that way, you think it's the thing to do. If everybody's talking about prosperity and numbers, it doesn't matter who's preaching that day. Mm -hmm. And people are doing the same thing that these folks were doing. You mm -hmm. see, that, that that's what happened. Now, um, 
in, in the church um, today, we, I'm seeing what the Lord was doing then. He gave them a stern warning. 1 Peter 5 8. Still applies, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah, it? still does. Uh -huh. it, it applies right here to saying this be sober mm. and vigilant mm. because your adversary, the devil, prowls about mm. like a roaring lion, mm. seeking mm. whom he may devour. He was doing it then, he's doing it now. That's why the Lord was saying, Don't, don't accept their peace, mm. don't go after their prosperity because that's a trap. Mm. You mm. see? was a trap for the uh, churches today. Yes. Yeah. It's a trap for the churches today because, had, and I have to be, uh, I have to say that had I not had the relationship that I have with the Lord, I would have been, I would have been straddling because I came into a church that to me resembled the world. I mean, the first thing that got my attention was hearing a secular song during the break. I was like, oh, wow, I know I'm in the right place. <laughs> because but I was in the wrong place. But I had to, the Lord was teaching me that you're bringing secular music into a holy place. That's not acceptable. That wasn't his will. Mm -hmm. So yes. it really takes a relationship with the Lord and staying in his word. See, that's where we miss, miss it. We listen to the word, but we listen to a word coming out of the pulpit, but we don't learn the word for ourselves mm -hmm. and just get a confirmation from the word that's coming out of the pulpit. Ezra was crying from his yes, heart. He was, he was weeping out. for the nation. He was weeping because he knew. And see, it grieves my heart about America right now. Mm. And I'm so, I love my country and I'm grieved because of the sin of our country, mm. because of the sin of our nation. So we got to grieve, you know? What? And that's when God works when we grieve, you know? What did God mean, you know? But I see us uh, going the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of similarities here. Me too. That, that we are being taken down a pig. Mm -hmm. The United States is not what it used to be. No, they're not. They're not. They're it's not, not recognized the same. No, no, no they're, they're not. The they're paid by name. No, no. You know, once you're a champ and you've been a champ and somebody knocks you on the canvas, mm -hmm. the next man that comes up thinks he can beat mm -hmm. you too. Yes. And that's what we're seeing. And, and here's the history right here mm -hmm. of God's chosen people mm -hmm. doing the same thing. So we need to learn from it because, in other words, this is speaking to the church um, that, that if we take on the role of the Amorites and the Jebusites, it, that's why we come both individually and collectively unity. have to be together mm -hmm. in unity. We need to be uh, on the lookout for the devil. We really do need to look out for him, come in, because what he's trying to do is uproot God's people. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's trying to do in the church now. He's trying to uproot God's people. We are now, as churches, trying to do what the world does. Don't we have gospel award shows? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Why? <coughs> we like the world. <laughs> Where in the Bible do we see Christians competing? Mm -hmm. Where? Mm -hmm. Name one place. Where you say, I'm the best at this. Sunday's best. You're supposed to be humble. Where? Humble. The, the, world, the world now no. wants to have this thing, the world order they call coexist. Yeah, new world this, order. This is coexistence right here, what yeah. they're talking about with the Jebusites and the Canaanites mm -hmm. and, the, and the Egyptians mm -hmm. and, and all them. They were, mm -hmm. they were coexisting. Mm -hmm. And that's not what God wants. It yeah. says, shows it right here. That's not yeah. what God wants. We have to see that, that we... We've gotten into this world effect where we're trying to, instead of the world coming to us, where it says all things become new, we want to keep all things the same. The or the things that we're reversing order. Mm -hmm. I never really understood that. Because mm -hmm. I, I know that when, before I became a Christian, we had contests all the time. Mm -hmm. Music contests and band contests and singing contests and everything else. Then I came to the Lord and I said, Wait a minute, and I saw Christians going out doing what the world was doing. And then I heard of gospel singers arguing to who was supposed to get the award. Mm -hmm. Arguing. Well, saying that, that they didn't get it. Yeah, it was, a, it was either the Stella or the Dove Award. And there was a big rhubarb about it. that. Mm -hmm. and, and one man got really upset and said, I'm not giving that trophy back. 
you got to come over here and give it over my dead body or something like that. A trophy. And it was a joke yes. that the comedian had set him up yes. to show how much oh, that little, that, that statue that. meant to this man. You see what I mean? Yeah. This. And then he laughed it off, but they had they put it on the radio. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. It was hilarious. Come and get over my dead yeah. body. Yeah, he said you come in here if you want to. <laughs> I'm not gonna say who it was, but but so these people you know. So again, we we forget. And we're taking on the ways of the world, so it creeps into the church. How about people sleeping around? How about uh, how about uh, uh how about leaders? How about mm -hmm. the, the, the leaders of the church, the choir director, and, and the homosexuality that's coming into the church, and now everybody says, well, it's okay. We don't want to make any waves. Let everybody feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And everybody don't make it so hard. Yeah. 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 Don't make it so hard. Yeah. 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 hard. Yeah. Why does the word got to be so be difficult? Righteous. Maybe because Jesus says it was. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> but that's how it is. Let's make it so sad. There are people that know the word and still they sin. Still they, I call it deliberately sin. Yeah. Deliberately. 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 Well, that's what we have to get to. And so we can learn from this. Everything that's going on, that all these things tear at the fabric of the church. Mm -hmm. See, the, the devil doesn't come just rip it up. He just comes and cuts a little bit of the foxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little foxes and they get in, then we get used to mm -hmm. it. And that's why we're used to it now. You, know? the, uh, you have to have your mind made up that you're not going to compromise the word of God no matter mm -hmm. what, no matter who. Sometimes you have to be in it, you know, by yourself. If you are, your heart is committed to the Lord and the Lord knows your heart and your desire is to honor and bless him. As we were reading through, I remember reading way back, you know, when the king started, that actually... The kings were supposed to take the the word of God and write it all the way through for mm. themselves. Yes. Because they were to have the word in, in their minds and in their hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that's going to save us today. Like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Psalm 119, 11, thy word, if I hid in my heart, mm -hmm. then I, I might not sin against yes. thee. Because if you mm -hmm. truly have a desire to please God, when you read that word and it convict you, the Holy Spirit know that you know that now that you know He is not going to give you mm -hmm. any peace. He's going to convict you and take you to right uncle, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to change your way. <laughs> yeah. God's yeah. going to chastise you as a child. He know you know the truth now, and you're not doing it. Yes, you're going to get a spanking. <laughs> yes, and we know some things like we we see from here that the intermarriage marrying. Okay, then it's because God didn't want that bloodline to be broken. Right. He wants that bloodline yeah. pure until we learn, because they were still learning. So, the tribe of Judah, but yeah. Jesus was going to come. Jesus. Yeah, and so, so that's why, you know, we see that now. And, and But we know things like adultery, fornication. How about secular music? How about the, the hypnotic influence of music? Because music it definitely works on your spirit. And, and you can get the beat or a phrase in a song, mm -hmm. and you'll be singing that thing all day. Because it works on you, right? It does. Then, right. But, uh, yes. Uh, Pastor Joe, the reason I can't listen to secular music, it does something it's in my infectious. spirit. And, uh, and you will have, now I just do just Christian music, and now I'm having it in my head all the time. Christian yeah. music. So yeah. you know the difference. Yeah. How about dressing like the world? Leave oh. nothing to the imagination. The churches are doing that. Yeah. Gospel, oh, yeah. gospel artists now are showing, you know, it's like yeah. the advertisement is, mm -hmm. is their body. Mm -hmm. it, and things like that. Well-known gospel singers. Uh, how about the way men are dressing? Mm -hmm. oh. You know, not only are women wearing jogging pants, the, the, the little, uh, what do you call them, yoga pants. No, I'm never wearing them. Yeah. I'm never wearing the yoga pants. Yeah. Skinny jeans. Show the new lady of hips. Not real man. See, not real man. <laughs> <laughs> but they're blurring the lines. Yeah. You see what I mean? The lines yeah. are getting blurred. Yeah. You know, this is uh, everything is Black Friday, Thursday, Monday now because of the holidays. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, they, they, Monday. they finally named the day after me. But but they now but but everything is Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and everything else. Look at some of the things they're selling. 
You can't tell a man's tennis shoe from a woman's tennis shoe. Mm -hmm. Look and see. Mm -hmm. Everything is unisex. Mm -hmm. They got unisex mm -hmm. shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't like that in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the lines are being yeah. blurred. Yeah. Yeah. The men wear the little jeans with the little thighs showing you cut the little hole. Yeah. You want to see my thigh? I'll show you my thigh. You know, and, and it's in the church. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. When did this start? I don't know men that dress up. I don't know men that dress up. I mean, you see it's, it. But. Yeah, if you got a hole in your pants, it better be an accident. <laughs> We're not talking about sewing. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it yeah. was when I was coming up. They got <laughs> Back in the day, we used to be ashamed of the whole Yeah. Thing. yeah. But now, don't we see passions of leaders? Where did it come from? Don't we see passion trying to be, you know? We, we see it more and more. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic. I'm just saying we better learn from the past. So that we're not generation. Yeah, so we're not taken down. Yeah. So that we're not taking down that that same road. And I don't have to mention, uh, you know, the abomination of uh, uh, homosexuality and transgenderism, which is a farce. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for people who, who think they're a, a boy trapped in a, a you know a girl's body and vice versa, but they're trying to say that that this is. No. medicine and you need drugs for this this is not you need Jesus for this yes, yes, Jesus do. is the cure mm -hmm. yep. you know if you have any problem with gender ambiguity all you have to do is take a DNA test what were you born under look at your birth certificate that I don't care how you feel this tells you your true gender mm -hmm. yeah okay and this, uh, but but now society is making tons of money yeah. off these poor it's people, all about money. and so again, this is the world. So now we adopt it, or it's being forced down the mouth of the church. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. God said, "Don't even take part in their practices." Mm -hmm. He says it right yeah. here in the world. Yeah. He's saying it forever. Amen. Don't even have the appearance of evil. That's right. Shun yeah. the very appearances. So so we have to rebuke that in in Jesus' name. That won't work, devil. And we continue to do the work of the Lord. So the devil will try to keep us stagnant. He'll try to keep us uh, 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 lost. And that, we, and that will happen if we continue to go after, the, go after the world instead of going after the word. Mm -hmm. And just like in uh, the remnant there, mm -hmm. God has remnant today. He He's got a remnant today. Has a remnant. Yes, That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we know that uh, now in chapter 10 of Ezra, Ezra goes before the Lord. He's praying. He's confessing. And uh, the people, before he's confessing for the people, he makes a new covenant with God. Okay? And what they said, another covenant. And what was the offer? They said that they would put away all their wives that are, and that were born to them. They're going to put those things away. Now, you know, that must have been something. Heartbreaking for the children. Wasn't that heartbreaking? Yeah. Here you've got a relationship with these pagan people, but now you've had babies by them, mm -hmm. and you had to give all that up wow, to walk intense. with the Lord. And they agreed to it, the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, they agreed to this. So in summary, what must we give up now to walk with the Lord? Mm -hmm. That's what it makes me some think things about. Some are hard, harder than others. So we yeah. got some hard things to give mm -hmm. up. And we got some things that we complain and cry about, but thank God you don't have to give up your whole family no. to walk with the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's why it's so important that we continue to, to uh, mm -hmm. bring our families in. And we need to remember 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that that's a standby, right? If my yes. people are called by my name, will just humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and then turn, turn, turn from our wicked ways. He'll forgive us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's never too late to start. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really it that we're going to do in uh, um, Ezra. Next week, God willing, I want to go to Nehemiah and Esther. I want to cover both of those if we can. Esther's a short chapter. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to move into Job. Mm -hmm. And I really want to get yeah. into Job. But Job got, got some good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I no, want to right. I want, to keep, I want to keep Sister Lucille occupied. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to uh, God willing, uh, be ready for that next week. Let's talk on uh, Nehemiah and then uh, 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 the book of uh, Esther. 
Sister uh, Carrie, you want to help me with that one next week? Oh, I got something in Nehemiah you want to talk about? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to adjourn now. And to those of you who are watching, I pray that you know the Lord. I pray that you know Jesus. This is really what it's all about. He sent his son that we could be saved. And uh, uh, no matter what you're going through, no matter your position in life, it, you're going to need Christ Jesus. And you know, I, there's a verse in the Bible that says, today your soul is required of you. Mm -hmm. That means that you may take your very last breath today. Mm -hmm. Where will you go? Yes. You cannot see heaven unless you're born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God let alone get there, unless you're born again. All it takes is accepting Jesus into your heart. I'd like to ask you, I'd like to pray a prayer for you right now, and if you pray this prayer with me, in sincerity, you will be a child of God. Just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Just admit it. Say, I, I don't do everything right, and I believe that you died for mankind, and God raised you from the dead. If that is you and you are God, would you come into my life and show me the proper way to go? I'm willing to give up the things that I can with your help, and I'll follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all it takes. It says that if you confess with your uh, mouth and, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he will God raise him from the dead, that you are now a saved, born-again believer. Amen. Heaven is rejoicing. Get yourself a Bible. Uh, let the Holy Spirit come into your life and start reading that Bible from cover to cover. And uh, go to a church. Uh, ask the Lord to send you to a church where they're preaching the true word of God. You're welcome to come here. We are Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide. We preach the true word of God. You're welcome to join us or you're welcome to call in or sit through Bible study, whatever the case may be. We'll even be a covering for you until the Lord leads you to a church that's conducive to learning for you. So with that, we're going to pray out, and we hope to see you again next week. We hope you'll join us uh, with uh, another uh, segment of Walking Through the Bible. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything. I thank you, Lord, for these wonderful saints of God. I thank you for the message. I thank you for the learning. We can never learn enough, Lord, about you. Thank you that you make it simple for us in simple terms that we can follow it, Lord. I pray that it sticks with us until we meet again. So would you bless us now to get to our respective destinations safely. Guide us and keep us, Lord. We will never forget to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Amen. God bless you.